Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, welcome for another edition of the video productions by the Ortelino Company. I am Dieter, your host for this video, and I'm the owner of a little family company located in Bavaria in southern Germany. And we've sold all prints, mostly Japanese prints, in weekly online auctions since 2001, which made me a little bit gray and old. Well, that's 21 years now, imagine. Okay, uh, what's this video about? This video, I want to talk about Hiroshi Yoshida, one of the very great, famous printmakers of the so-called Shinhanga art movement, uh, an art movement from the first half of the 20th century, Japanese art movement um, in woodblock prints. And I want to talk a little bit about the bio of Hiroshi Yoshida and how he came to woodblock printmaking, because that's an interesting story actually. And then uh, I want to uh, talk a little bit about the price and value of Hiroshi Yoshida prints uh, compared from the year 1930, from which we have uh, an old price list uh, to today's um, prices and compare it, uh, considering of course the fact that $1 in 1930 uh, had another value than today. Hiroshi Yoshida. Well, you see an old photograph in the background. He was a rather ascetic, um, lean type. Was born in 1876 as the son of an elementary school principal. When he was 18 years old, he entered a private art school in Tokyo. And he became actually a very well-established, renowned painter. He exhibited, for instance, at these uh, state-sponsored exhibition shows uh, with the name of Titan and, and Bunten. And, uh, and that's a surprise now. Hiroshi Yoshida was already 44 years old when he made his first woodblock print, because this is what he is famous for. Nobody knows him today anymore as a painter. How come that today everybody who knows a little bit about Japanese prints, well, does not know Hiroshi Yoshida as a painter anymore, but as the famous printmaker and print designer together with Hazui Kawase, you can say, of the so-called Shinhanga art movement. Hiroshi Yoshida was already 44 years old when he made his first print and he made his first seven prints um, commissioned by a publisher, a dominant publisher at that time, dominant in Tokyo, Watanabe Shotsaburo. And he was the great mentor and some even say the inventor of the so-called Shinhanga art movement. Uh, these first seven uh, prints made by Hiroshi Yoshida, they were quite successful. That was in the early 1920s. And then something really devastating happened. On September 1st, 1923, Japan saw one of the worst earthquakes, probably the worst earthquake Japan had ever seen. Uh, in the area of Tokyo and Osaka. It's the so-called, today referred as the Great Kanto Earthquake. And this earthquake destroyed roughly 80% of Tokyo, not so much by the earthquake itself, but by the fires that raged as a consequence for four days uh, in Tokyo. And the print shop of Watanabe, with all the blocks, including the blocks for the prints by Hiroshi Yoshida, that was all destroyed. That was in early September 1923. Well, as a consequence of this rather desperate situ situation, Hiroshi Yoshida decided um, to go on a business trip together with his wife Fujio to the United States. He had already been there before, um, I think it was 1900, I'm not quite sure, 
uh, for art studies. And he wanted to establish business contacts with dealers, galleries, uh, museums. And in their luggage, they had a bunch of their paintings and fortunately also um, of his prints, but also woodblock prints by other artists. And well, uh, this stay in the US took more than one year. And to their surprise, the Americans were not so much interested in, in the paintings. They could hardly sell them. That was rather disappointing. But the Americans showed a lively interest in these woodblock prints. Uh, back in Japan, Hiroshi Yoshida established his own print and publishing studio. There was a huge uh, financial investment while well, he employed carvers and printmakers, had to pay them, he had to rent a studio, um, they had to buy tools, equipment uh, and, and, and whatsoever. And this was the, the beginning of the Yoshida Studios, who, by the way, still exist until our days and now in the third generation. Yoshida Studios still existing in Tokyo, Japan. Until the end of his, um, his life in 1950, Hiroshi Yoshida had created 259 woodblock prints. Seven out of these 259 commissioned by Watanabe, but all others self-published. That means, okay, they, they were also responsible, had to see how they could sell them. And um, by and large, Hiroshi Yoshida and his family, they were quite successful. Um, so roughly after 10 years, this rather large investment uh, had um, come back in, in, in the form of uh, financial results. In the 1950s, um, a man, some collectors of Japanese uh, prints may have heard this, this name, Oliver Stadler, an American who came to Japan um, after the end of World War II and who supported and promoted Japanese artists, Japanese printmakers, and who wrote a book, well, collectors of Japanese prints uh, may know that, Oliver Stadler. And he interviewed Fujio Yoshida, well, the, the wife of Hiroshi Yoshida, about this trip to the USA. And I think that is quite interesting. And now I want to quote from this book what uh, Fujio Yo um, Yoshida remembers from this USA trip. Well, beginning of quotation. There was a good deal more interest in a few prints that my husband had taken along. His first prints, commissioned and published by the house of Watanabe. The fine reception given, uh, given these prints, plus the fact that several foreign print artists had recently created a stir in Japan, made my husband think that the Japanese had better get busy in the field that was once their own. And he started concentrating on prints as soon as we returned. It was then that he decided to become his own publisher. End of quote. Hiroshi Yoshida was not only a passionate printmaker, but he was also an avid mountaineer and a true cosmopolitan. On many of his prints, uh, you find subjects, well, mostly landscapes. He was primarily a landscape printmaker, uh, which not only show uh, scenes from Japan, but from the United States, from India, from Switzerland, Venice, Greece, Egypt. And you find quite a lot of print subjects um, mountain scenes from Japan like this one. I now want to make some value considerations with Hiroshi Yoshida prints. Uh, value is maybe not quite the correct expression. I want to compare prices for Hiroshi Yoshida prints 
then, then 1920s, 1930s, and now, well, now, if you're a collector of Japanese prints, especially Shinanga prints, you know Hiroshi Yoshida prints, original Hiroshi Yoshida prints, in good conditions, are not cheap, by no way cheap. So, how do we know what the price was then at that time? Well, there's a fortunate coincidence. In the year 1930, there was um, a sales exhibition of Japanese prints in Toledo. Not Toledo in Spain, but Toledo in Ohio. Um, a sales exhibition, I think it was a museum of Toledo or whatever. And today we still have a catalog from this exhibition with all the prices at that time. And this catalog contains roughly 10 prints by Hiroshi Yoshida. And at that time in 1930, a Hiroshi Yoshida print um, did cost in this exhibition between 10 and 20 dollars. 10 and 20 dollars. Wonderful if you had bought in 1930 a print by Hiroshi Yoshida. Well, you had multiplied um, the, the value. Now, of course, that's nonsense. You know it yourself. So I wanted to know what's the equivalent in today's value of 10 to 20 dollars. So what did I do? I researched the internet for the costs of a popular and widespread famous T Ford model, the so-called Tin Lizzie. And I found a price of $290 for this car T Ford model called um, Tin Lizzie from 1925. When you take this and compare it with what's the cost of a comparable car today, well, I came to an equivalent of 10 to, to $20 for today's value of roughly $800 to $1,600. In other words, roughly the same in value. If you had bought at that time a Hiroshi Yoshida print, had conserved it well, uh, and it's still in excellent condition, um, you would have kept the value, well, really from that time an excellent value, maybe mm, could have doubled the value, maybe. But so roughly, just as a, as a ballpark figure, I think quite interesting um, to yeah, look at such um, such uh, a, a price development from, from history over such a, a long time of nearly 100 years. I told you at the beginning of the video that we have uh, two rare prints by Hiroshi Yoshida in the coming auction. It's the auction number 1740 and it will begin in uh, on July 3rd, uh, 2000. 22. And one shows the Taj Mahal from this view a little bit far away. And um, Hiroshi Yoshida did not uh, make any woodblock print designs from photographs. He sketched on the spot. He really was there. And it's interesting. You see here um, a caravan of camels in the front. I've never been at the Taj Mahal, but I'm sure it will no longer look like that today. Either you have masses of tourists here, or in the meantime, um, there are houses or endless rows of cars. Um, I have no idea. But that's the view how Hiroshi Yoshida actually saw it when he traveled himself uh, in India. And the second print. This is a mountain scene from a mountain climb in Japan. It shows the climbing of Mount Harinoki in Japan in winter. And this mountain is 2,800 meters high. Yeah. Um, and Hiroshi Yoshida, I told you, he was an avid mountaineer. That means he was in that group. He actually climbed that mountain. And well, I 
practiced mountain hiking in summer and winter my, myself uh, during my life, but I don't think that I was as strong and as tough and enduring as Hiroshi Yoshida. And it's extremely interesting for me. Well, this shows uh, climbing a mountain in winter in 1926. Uh, first of all, look, no skis, no snow, snowshoes. And if you ever try to climb uh, in deep snow like this, uh, such a high mountain in winter, you know what it means. Well, look at the primitive poles. They, they have only one pole. And today you use two and specialized poles, especially um, uh, ideal for, for walking in, in snow. Look at the caps. Well, this guy has a normal hat. This guy just has a, a, a hat band. Well, no woolen caps there. These two guys are normal hats. Well, look their gear and look the huge backpacks they have. You cannot make 2,800 meters in one day. Therefore, I assume they carry uh, a huge equipment with tents uh, and everything they need for, let's say, a trip of at least two days to make the summit and uh, these uh, difficult winter conditions. Well, a little bit, um, a look behind the pure aesthetics of an image. I'm always interested what's behind an old image. Well, this is the end um, of this video. Thank you. But I want to end it with an information about, uh, last information about Hiroshi Yoshida. Shortly before his death, he had the idea for a great project. He wanted to make a series of 100 views of the world, 100 views of the world, but he died and he could not even um, begin, not even one print of this planned series. But interesting about, it shows something about this, the, the energy um, of this man, a very aesthetic, uh, lean um, man, when you look at his image. Well, before I say goodbye, a last, not that one, yeah, a last look at Hiroshi Yoshida. Died April 5, 1950. Thanks for watching this video and take care, and I hope to see you in our next video. We are always pleased to see you uh, bidding in our auctions, of course. Thanks for watching. Bye.